Hey guys, and welcome back to Halo 2 Anniversary, as we continue our search for the sacred icon in the quarantine zone. In the center of this zone is a sacred icon critical to the great journey. I must find it. We shall cut into the heart of this infestation, retrieve the icon, and burn any flood that stand in our way. The parasite is not to be trifled with. I hope you know what you're doing. Oh, this isn't our first rodeo with the parasite. No, sir. And fear not pain or death. No, officer. I'll follow when our reinforcements arrive. Luckily, this time, they have uh, supplied us with quite an array of vehicles. Uh, this is the Type 46 Spectre, which is essentially a Covenant version of a Warthog, I suppose. Not quite as good as the Warthog, um, but it does hover, and it moves like a hover vehicle, so you can move in all accesses, which is quite nice. Anyway, this mission is pain. <laughs> it is proper hardcore Vic Hickler action and my voice is still cracking and going weird but whatever but this is cool right let's get stuck in now we are a little bit more durable than you would think but we are not invincible let's get to work on these sentinels and I really wish we managed to get a third man this is too much. Stop your belly aching, you pussy. Get stuck in. So we've got flood infection forms that have taken covenant vehicles and human vehicles. We've got enforcer sentinels. We've got normal sentinels. It's all going down in the quarantine zone. So the AI is a little bit weird in Halo 2. Um, it because they enabled the AI to pilot vehicles instead of like the original Halo game um, whoever you had available would jump in the vehicle with you in this they kind of prioritize taking their own vehicles and that's going to be a thing later on which we'll see um, it's not great but it does lead to some entertaining um, sections going forwards man these sentinels they're all over us but the Spectre does seem to be holding up fairly well. And of course, the great thing about Elites is uh, all of our boys have shields, which is quite nice. That's something we won't see on the human side until, I believe, uh, Halo 5. All right, area looks somewhat pacified for now. Uh, we've got another enforcer. Those missile barrages really hurt. Also, there's our old friend parked right in front of us. The good old M808B Scorpion, which we are certainly going to be commandeering. Now, that Scorpion should have a pilot. <laughs> it should be uh, very angry right about now. Um, I'm not sure what happened, I'm guessing one of the uh, other enemies managed to dislodge, should we say. Whoa! <laughs> well, that was uh, interesting. I think he, like, meleeed us, but the physics just glitched out. Ah, <laughs> oh, you love to see it. Alright, let's make sure everything else is clear. There is a rocket launcher down here, which is very handy, to say the least, but we're going to leave it. There's also a warthog that's crashed behind us which is not worth the hassle of getting. Um, mainly because you're just really vulnerable outside this thing. And there's no reason to pick the Warthog over the Scorpion tank. Really isn't. This Type 46 is starting to, starting to come apart at the seams now. Armor is boiling off. We've got sparks. And the best thing is, we haven't even started the journey through the quarantine zone. Right, okay. Uh, looks like all of our men are holding up. Ironically, if the third guy had actually got in with us, he'd still be alive. Uh-oh, there's some action happening behind us. 
That's okay. A couple of uh, ghosts piloting. A couple of ghosts piloting? I mean, uh, a couple of flood combat forms piloting ghosts. Now, this is one thing that bothers me as well. Trying to get these guys off the gun so they're going to get in the uh, scorpion with us and add their firepower to ours is, again, it's something that's a little bit harder in Halo 2. I'm hoping with the rumoured remakes they do change the squad system. It would be nice if you could give, you know, fairly basic commands. Um, I don't need to, you know, give them tactics and shit like that, but it would be nice if you could just ask your men to follow you or stay here or something like that. That would be pretty cool. Because the squad dynamics is really fun. It's great having uh, vehicles and uh, soldiers on your side. It's one of the great things about some of the bigger Halo combat missions. And that's one of the things that is lost on the higher difficulties, especially on the human side, because the Marines just do not last. Now, RB here is a little bit rusty at the helm of a human vehicle. But he's gonna soon grow to love the M8 Scorpion battle tank with a beautiful 90 millimeter high velocity repeating cannon. Okay, it's not as meaty as the 105 millimeter that the uh, I think it was the uh, M808S variant gets later on in the series. That's the one where they also took the uh, coaxial machine gun away and added a turret on the front of it. Uh, yeah, that was a meaty, meaty vehicle. I think that was post Covenant War, maybe, or maybe not. Maybe it was. Maybe it's Halo Three that happens. But you know, this thing is beastly, and I always did prefer having the coaxial mounted gun, the good old medium caliber machine gun on this thing, which you can use. Whereas in the later games, it was controlled by an AI um, in the uh, pilot seat. Uh, well, in the gunner seat, which yeah, yeah, it was different. Wow. That enforcer is just slamming those missiles into the uh, into our ceramic plated armor there, but luckily it shrugs it off like a boss. All right, things are going to get a little bit hot and heavy here. I think we're getting shot at from behind. It's time to just get out of here, make best speed away. Whoa, Jesus! We've got ceramic plating blasting off. It's fine. We didn't need it anyway. Weight reduction. Oh man, look at all this nonsense here. We have a hell of a war zone here. May I remind you, this was an original Xbox game. Look at this full scale like combat out in front of us, this huge sprawling battlefield. Um, we don't really get games with uh, dynamic battlefields like this now. This happened on, not the 360, not the Xbox One, the original Xbox this was on. This is insane. And yes, this is the remastered version, which, you know, has upgraded graphics and all that, all that stuff. But it's still the same game. This, this, this is how it was on the Xbox. It was mind-blowing. You know, when you look at things like Resistance, Fall of Man, um and Killzone, and games like that that were on the PlayStation 3. They never had anything like this. Not like this. This was mad. But I digress. Bungie were just, Bungie were on another, another plane of existence. And it's a big loss that we lost them to some crappy MMO, <laughs> I guess. Yes. I know there are a lot of people that like Destiny out there, but I think it sucks. I've tried multiple times to get into it. It feels great to play, but it's it's just a, a MMO looter shooter with season passes and microtransactions and the fact that you have to pay full price to buy the game every year. Ooh. And you got to watch out for those. I'm going to stop ranting now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You've really got to watch out for those floods. Those flood combat forms with rocket launchers. Oh, they do like to pepper them in there every now and again. And they really will wake you up. 
Now the M8 can take a round or two, but she's in pretty bad shape already. The engine's fine, she's not boiling over and overheating, but we've lost a considerable amount of armor plating, which is not great. But a few high velocity shells up his arsehole sorted his noise out. Anyway, let's make best speed away. I wouldn't want to sit on these tracks. I'm <laughs> not lying. Um, oh man, we've got an enforcer behind us. Oh, he's following. Now, enforcer um, sentinels have another trick up their sleeves. They have a, another ability that we haven't seen yet, and he really has us pinned down here. I'm not taking any chances, taking any more hits, as best as we can anyway. Looks like we've got some ghosts coming in as well, but that's fine. We'll handle those with the high velocity. So yeah, they have another ability. Uh, they can actually pick vehicles up with those big claws that they have. Uh, and they will lift you into the sky and start tearing you apart and then dropping you down. I believe we see that later on. Uh, it's pretty bad <laughs> when that happens. But, you know, as I've said... The M808 is a is a pretty tough, pretty tough beast. Also, this thing weighs 66 tons, so those enforcer drones are pretty substantial. Pretty powerful units. Now, this is one of the things that I always loved about Halo as well. The fantastic vehicular combat. It really, really is second to none. Um, on any game really any first person shooter and yes I will die on that hill I've played pretty much all of them the vehicular combat in Halo is just incredible anyway let's get out of here you would have thought this snow would have been helping this boiling armor because a couple of my elite buddies are literally sitting on boiling armor that's probably a little bit uncomfortable be honest. Alright, we hit a checkpoint. That's nice. Now I've got a couple more light recons. That's fine. Yeah, the Scorpion was not to be trifled with. One of the best human vehicles. Oh, we're taking hits. Taking hits from full runner missile technology. And we're still resisting it somehow. Don't question it. Oh, we resisted it for as long as we could anyway. Oh, that hurts. That's fine. We got a good checkpoint. I think the best course of action is to just keep moving. Don't stop. Just keep this armored mammoth moving forwards. Be nice if in one of the later halos we can get a grizzly tank. The humans are proper... Um, heavy tank. I mean, this is a human main battle tank. This is their standard uh, frontline combat unit. But the Grizzly tank is their heavy, heavy hitter. And it is bigger and more juicier than the, uh, the Scorpion. Twin link cannons. I think they're 135mm rail guns. Ooh, she's a peach. But I don't think we actually get to, to play with it. Um, in the, the first person shooter games. I don't, I don't think. Anyway, uh, I've only played Halo 5 once because it was shit, you see. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I never went back, so I can't really remember it. But we did get the Idrasil. Ooh, the, the, one of the human, new human vehicles. The Idrasil. Yes, Idrasil Mantis, uh, which is a walker with a um, extremely fast high power. There we go. See that? See him? He's picked us up and dropped us. Yeah. Nasty. That that can really ruin your day. <clears throat> yeah, the Mantis is probably one of my favorite human vehicles. Because um, it's just, you know, who doesn't like giant combat mechs with shields? Ooh, we just got cut in half stepping out of the uh, <laughs> scorpion there. That did not go to our way. Bit of scorpion on scorpion action. That's fine. Aim for the turret. 
Now, one, yeah, and on, in the later games, the detail does get ramped up to 10. Especially with the rear of the Scorpion as you're firing the main gun and you've got the auto loader going and the shell ejection system. Right, we're just going to abandon these guys. We're just going to get out of here. Sorry, lads, but, you know, uh, the universe's survival depends on me. You, uh, not, not, not so much. Now, we're going to be leaning on that active camo quite a lot. Because, uh, it, on, like, on Heroic and Legendary, it really is pretty much required. Oof. Looks like we've got another war zone down here. Well, no time for tears. Let's keep going. Now, one thing to note on the active camo, if you use it and you get hit, it does reset it. Anyway, here is our terminal for this level. It is most unusual that in all the exploits of these Arbiters, you never mention their role in choosing their missions of redemption. There is no role, Oracle. Once one of our commanders becomes an Arbiter, he belongs to the Hierarchs. These Hierarchs... They are the same High Prophets who control all the holy relics you collect from my time? The same. And they use these relics to build your new weapons and bring you the word of your gods? It has always been so. Interesting. Am I a holy relic? I... I do not understand. Because I am certainly not a god. I am a tool as is this mining platform you stand upon, as was the installation that once orbited the planet. The Forerunner's technology is lasting and indeed quite powerful, but I'm quite certain they would have told me if I was infused with some kind of divine power. I suspect some of your prophets may have been quite aware of how much divine inspiration tools such as myself could provide. And you never question these proclamations. Even your mightiest warriors, these Arbiters, never questioned? Questioning was what brought shame to the word Arbiter long ago, Oracle. How disappointing. I fear now that there are many questions we should have been asking for a long, long time. I would be more than happy to answer any such questions, but I have a few more for you. Continue your tale of these Arbiters. Yes, so uh, I like this bit of backstory here, filling in how, oh, <clears throat> uh, 343, oof, yeah, trouble is going for that terminal is almost, well, terminal, um, yeah, 343 is kind of <laughs> speaking some, spitting some facts at our uh, elite friends here, and uh, yeah, at least they stop and listen, I mean, when you think about the whole covenant ideology, it's kind of insane. And what's interesting, which is something that isn't really covered in the games, but it's covered in the books, is the three Covenant hierarchs. They kind of... They know there's something that isn't exactly right with what they believe, but they're so indoctrinated, and they're so set on their righteous path that they, they're, they're locked in with focus. For instance, they also know that humanity is the reclaimer species. They know that. They know that um, to properly manipulate and understand the forerunners, they need humanity, right? Um, but they were so upset that the mantle of responsibility, which is what was passed down from the um, uh, forerunners, essentially, you know, to be the, the guardians of the universe, when the forerunners, forerunners stepped into the night, they handed it down to humanity. And yeah, yeah, the, the, the prophets didn't like that, which is why we have the genocidal war in the first place. Which is, uh, you know, pretty deep for a first person shooter. Anyway, we've got some mortar tanks, so we're just gonna slap him around with a double tap. Get out of here. Covenant rubbish. And there is our prize, guarded by a flood. 
Yuck. And it is ours. Anyway, guys, till next time.